Samsung launches their Vision Pro competitor. The ROG Xbox Ally X performs better off of Windows, and AMD with the dual 3DV cache CPU and a 9800X 3D successor. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, October 22nd, 2025. I'm going to start off today just reminding you of the giveaways that we have going on over on our Twitch streams, twitch.tv forward slash UFT Tech. Got a 9800X 3D RTX 5090 gaming PC that we're giving away. We actually did a video on this recently that you can check out right up there. And we actually have a 5070 Ti gaming PC that we're giving away over on our twitch.tv forward slash slash UFD music stream. So you can go check both of those out in case you're interested. Come say hi, restreams games roughly, uh, I think he starts 2 p.m. South African Standard Time, which is 8 a.m. Eastern. Uh, and then the U.S. team takes over. Today's gaming day, so they'll be taking over at 10 a.m. Eastern their time to uh, play a few video games and do some team building. So you can check that out. And I personally really want to check out the new Galaxy XR headset that got launched between Google and Samsung yesterday, coming in at a price point of $1,800, roughly half of what the Apple Vision Pro costs. And based on the initial reports of what I'm seeing about this from the you know hands-on perspectives that various tech media gave it looks to be a very competent headset the android xr experience appears to be pretty fleshed out in terms of what it can do and how it can run various different apps and gadget putting out their hands-on indicating that yeah this thing actually performs pretty well it does look a little bit uncomfortable like the head strap might need to be changed but it doesn't look as easily interchangeable as the vision pro does to get the dual net set up but uh has a higher resolution than the vision pro has slightly lower refresh fresh rate coming in at 90 hertz versus the 120, but it is significantly cheaper. And it can run nearly every single Android app that's out there because Google worked on that. And it, as long as it doesn't require specific dedicated hardware to run the Android app, then the Galaxy XR headset can indeed run it. This is slightly different than what you get with the Vision Pro, which can run most iPad apps, but not iPhone apps. So you actually have a limited experience there. And if there's a Vision Pro app, I don't think they give you access to the iPad app. So it's a little complicated in terms of getting all of that set up. One of the most interesting parts about it, and the thing that I kind of uh, have defaulted to using my Vision Pro for the most is video game streaming using something like Steam in-home streaming. It's broadcasted on a giant display in my headset. Well, it turns out that the Galaxy XR can be tethered to the computer for a more traditional VR experience, and there's optional wireless controllers for it that likely won't cost $250, because that's how much Sony is charging for their PSVR 2 Sense controllers outside of just getting the PSVR 2. So there's a lot that I really like about what Samsung and Google are doing about the Galaxy XR and the whole ecosystem. The only bummer right now is at least of checking the Samsung South African website. It doesn't look like they have been uh, put on display here in terms of being purchased. So I might have to wait a little bit in order to get my hands on that. The Vision Pro is not even available here. So it's a little, a little tricky to get all that kind of stuff now that I'm here. Maybe we'll uh, see if Kyler can do a review on this. But Samsung also teasing that they might have some smart glasses coming up in the near future. But the Galaxy XR wasn't the only thing that got launched yesterday. No, OpenAI launching their Atlas browser, which is supposed to be their chat GPT infused web browsing experience. So you can use it, have chat GPT right there on the side, and it will remember various different things about your browsing experience, and it can give you different memories and make it more usable from what I gather is what they're trying to sell it as. It's also gonna have an agent mode where it can surf the web for you and book various different things. If you wanted to get you a reservation or a vacation or edit a document, it could do all of that. And when things go wrong, you say it wasn't me, it was just the AI. So it appears to be a pretty big moment for OpenAI. A lot of people discussing the Atlas browser, not sure if people are gonna switch over to it, but just like the Scooby-Doo meme with Suze, you take off the mask, who's running the browser it's chromium it's a chrome it's a chrome browser that's it's all chromium all the way down so atlas based on chrome google still kind of in the entire ecosystem there let me know if you're going to try out the atlas browser i uh, have very limited use cases where i think this could benefit me at all so i'm curious to hear if you have one what you would be using it for i want to hear from you down below in the comments and nvidia has been hearing that people want more vram but they're not giving it to you on the gaming gpus just yet it turns out they're uh, increasing their ai prosumer gpus 
GPUs to have more VRAM. Their 48 gigabyte RTX Pro 5000 Blackwell card going from 48 to 72 gigabytes, getting a bit more there. It's keeping everything else the same, the same CUDA cores, the same memory bandwidth, the same TDP, it's just going from 48, 72 gigabytes of VRAM. And then if you want more than that, you have to go up to the RTX Pro 6000 in order to get the 96 gigabytes of VRAM. I will say this is probably the most frustrating portion of my current move is that I don't have a desktop PC as of yet because I've been spending all of our finances on getting the office and the house set up here. So I just have my RTX Pro 6000 sitting out so I can't use it for all of the local AI things that I was trying to uh, play around with. So that's just a paperweight currently at the moment. Need to work on getting a desktop PC built sometime in the near future, but uh, doesn't look like it's gonna happen soon. More, more pressing things to spend money on at the current moment. But if you see anybody out there who looks like me building a PC and it isn't me, that's Zach's tech turf, but could also be a deep fake. Turns out that YouTube's doing something about that when it comes to creators with their AI likeness detection platform where content creators can register with YouTube, provide them with a government ID ID and a video of their face to allow them to enter into a similar to their content ID platform for various different likeness reasons that could potentially be violating the usages, especially with AI. There should be a submit a likeness removal request for the creators who are in this program. However, YouTube and Google are very clear to say that this does not guarantee that the video has any action taken against it whatsoever. It would have to violate privacy guidelines. It would have to be a violation of using your likeness. And if there just using your content, then that could be just a traditional copyright removal setup, but trying to protect creators uh, from, I mean, you, you see this all the time with like MKBHD or Linus or Mr. Beast just being placed in various ads that are clearly not them, but uh, their likeness is being used. That's kind of what this would be used for. And what Reese is used for is giving you the deals. It was his birthday yesterday. Thank you everybody for your birthday wishes down below in the comments, but it's birthday time here at UFD Tech. And today's birthday is Rickus, the guy who's editing this video. So wish Rickus a happy birthday, please, and enjoy the Deal Masters dealing you up some deals. Yo, welcome back to a special edition of Java Deals. A big thank you to our friends over at Java for sponsoring this episode. We're gonna be taking a look at a couple of the deals found over there, starting with this AMD Ryzen 7 7700X, which you can grab open box for only $219.99. Probably my biggest recommendation if you're starting a new AM5 build right now. But then next up, we have this gaming PC from Elijah's Lab. If you featuring a Ryzen 5 3600, an RTX 2070 Super, 16 gigs of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz, a one terabyte Gen 4 NVMe SSD for only $625. And then lastly, one cool thing we found is this Founders Edition RTX 3090 Ti featuring 24 gigs of RAM for only $849.99. I still think this is one of the most iconic GPUs in the last couple of years. And if you've always wanted to grab one, here's your chance. A big thank you again to our friends over at Jawa for sponsoring today's episode. Don't forget, Jawa is the number one gaming marketplace to buy and sell PC hardware online. And Hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you all back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thanks, Reese. I'm trying to save all that money to get an ROG Xbox Ally X. Kyler has the one in the United States, but it turns out that uh, the Xbox branded gaming handheld performs better if you just remove Microsoft from it entirely. This video from Cyber Dopamine testing out Bazite on the actual new Xbox and showing that in most power profiles that the Bazite average FPS runs faster than what you get on the Windows average. So Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 running 62 FPS on performance mode with Bazite, only 47 FPS with Windows. Hogwarts Legacy is 65 on Bazite and 60 on Windows using the turbo mode. But it appears that uh, there's still some overhead that's going into the Windows experience, even though it is the full screen setup that's supposed to make it more lightweight and agile for gaming. Not quite there. Even when uh, Kyler tested it, we found that the full screen experience did not change FPS all that much and there's still some bugs that are going on with Microsoft like if you put the handheld to sleep sometimes the controllers stop working which is a problem for a gaming handheld. According to the Cyber Dopamine's video, Bazite's devs worked very hard to iron out a ton of the bugs on the Xbox Ally X on day one making it a lot more usable than it was especially even on launch so showing that uh, smaller dev teams can move a little bit quicker than the massive bohemian, bohemian, bohemian Rhapsody that is 
Microsoft. And speaking of massive, let's check out the benchmarks for the upcoming Panther Lake Core Ultra X7358H with 12 XE3 cores. This has been tested in Geekbench 6 with a score of 52,000 on a ROG Zephyrus G14. So showing that the Zephyrus G14 likely to get this chip, but also that performance score is nutty. Beats a RTX 3050 laptop, the Arc A550M, the RX 6550M, previous arrow like stuff, the 890M from AMD, the 780M, the Lunar Lake chips, just absolutely devastating everything else. So take it with a huge grain of salt because there is a lot of stuff that can happen in pre-release benchmarks that indicate that it's not quite as performative as that. And just because it performs well in synthetic benchmarks doesn't necessarily mean that's gonna perform well in professional applications or in gaming. So it's just showing that uh, there might be potential here. There might be potential for Panther Lake and I'm excited to see where it goes. Just like I'm excited to see what AMD is doing with the new Ryzen 9 and Ryzen 7 chips that are reportedly gonna be coming out. This is not the first time that we've heard of the dual 3D V-Cache Ryzen 9 chip, but it is the first time that we're getting the naming scheme for this with the Ryzen 9 9950X3D2 because it has 3D vCache on both of its CCDs, making it so that it has 3D vCache available for everybody. So if gamers want to use it or uh, people who have found ways to leverage 3D vCache on all 16 cores, you might have the ability to do that now. But also what's intriguing is now there's a report that they're going to be putting out a successor to the 9800X3D. The Ryzen 7 9850X3D is being rumored to hit the market with not a ton changing. Same 3D vCache amount, same core setup, same TDP, but with a 400 megahertz higher boost clock speed to come in at 5.6 gigahertz, making it a little bit quicker, making it have a higher boost clock than the Ryzen 7 9700X and just probably going to be slightly faster at gaming. And uh, I'm intrigued to see if and when these release. The 9950X3D2 is allegedly going to have a TDP of 200 watts, so they need an extra 30 watts to power all of the extra 3D cache. But intriguing little setup. Kind of curious to see how this goes. We don't have a release date or a timeline. Potentially CES would be a good announcement time frame for them. I'm not sure if that's actually gonna happen, but uh, it would make a little bit of sense that that's the uh, announcement time that's happening. And what would make sense right now is if I go check out your comments from yesterday's episode of Hot News, we got Archangel saying happy birthday, Reese. We got a ton of those, so thank you for uh, making Reese feel special on his birthday. If you could do the same for Rickus, that'd be appreciated. But also Archangel saying, Brett, I wanted to ask, since you're back in SA, do you and the team have any plans in doing a SA community day? Not at the current moment. If we did, it would probably be tied around next year's cherry live stream we didn't really do one this year just because the move and everything so potentially then i'm not gonna be at rage this year because i have prior obligations during that weekend so i won't be meeting up with people then you know comic-con might present a time where we could organize something we have we have no plans at the current moment but it it's more of a possibility right now that i'm here and we got chris saying i'm hitting a point where i'm working on ditching microsoft i have baz on my legion go and framework desktop and i have a mac studio between these, I've found almost every game works on those platforms without any major issues. As long as you're not playing competitive games, esports games, all of those kind of ones that uh, require anti-cheat, then yeah, Bazite's a great solution. SteamOS is a great solution. I think the problem that I have is just the amount of performance you can get still on Windows. Getting a 5090 running on Bazite, not quite as straightforward. It's not impossible. Maybe once I get a desktop, I'll try to see if I can uh, run a Bazite experiment and just kind of stay on that for a little while and use that as my little gaming box. Kind of what I want to do is put this in a fractal moon and just put it on my, in my uh, my living room and just kind of have a nice little living room PC that can do a whole heck of a lot. We'll see what happens, I don't know. But uh, yeah, a lot of people doing that. And we got Miguel saying, Brent, with the numerous languages spoken in SA, are you fluent in Afrikaans? No, Afrikaans is probably one of my least encountered languages here in South Africa. Vast majority of people speak English as a second, third, or fourth language. It's the language of commerce here. It's the language of the government here. It's not hard to talk with people in English, but the vast majority of uh, people that that I interact with outside of the UFD tech team speak Zulu, speak Kosa, uh, Indibele, Shona, 
uh, Sutu. I've tried to learn some Zulu, not great, <laughs> but uh, enough to say, uh, hello, how are you? Salbona Unjani. So uh, trying a little bit to, to learn the languages, but because it's so v varied and diverse, there's 11 official languages here. Learning one does not give you access to uh, talking to everybody in that language. I don't know, I love it. Uh, but yeah, Afrikaans is uh, when people try to speak to me in Afrikaans, uh, especially in like YouTube comments, not, not in real life. I, I just, I don't know what's going on there. Again, uh, the, the least interacted with language that I, I have here. And definitely don't ask Reese to speak Afrikaans. <laughs> he can, he can understand some of it. I'm going to go now. Uh, Rickus, happy birthday to you, buddy. See you back here for more of the Haas Tech News later. And we have more birthdays this week. This is, Rickus is not the last one at the UFD Tech office. Thank you.